Chapter 14, Tackle Tough Conversations. Now, if you look at the picture on this slide of uh, Mr. Mike Tyson, and I'd like to call him Mr. I wouldn't want to uh, have him that mad at me. But the point of this is, is that we all have challenging conversations in our life. And the best leaders find effective ways to deal with them, where the people who are ineffective let the important ones slide. Now, some stuff you do need to let slide. That's understood. But there's some high value, important conversations that must be addressed. And if you don't, you take a little problem and make it big. The question in the chapter is, how skilled are you at quickly giving tough feedback? There's a quote here from Shakira that I love. I prefer an ugly truth to a pretty lie. There's many people in the world that would prefer you to just to lie to their face and tell them everything is fine. Just like the waiter in the restaurant does sometimes. They ask you how your food was. They're not really asking you how your food was. They actually don't really necessarily want to know. It's just part of their shtick. What we're looking for here as leaders is we want to make sure that we continually let other people know what they're doing well and dealing with the tough situations that are going to keep them from growing and evolving as leaders. And as leaders ourselves, we're often the only ones who have the ability or the insight to share these challenging things with other people on our team. The main principle of this is to tackle all of your tough conversations that need to be tackled in 48 hours. Not four hours, because if you tackle them right away, you're likely to be emotional. And as we talked about in the other chapters, emotions lead us to problems. The key is that we deal with these situations quickly, but not so quick that we may stick our foot in our mouth or make the situation worse. So you might need to work on this particular habit if you say nothing when things go sideways, normally. You explode when people anger or disappoint you. You let little frustrations build up until you reach a breaking point and then rashly fire someone and just get rid of them. Or people get defensive or emotional when you give feedback. In all of these cases, either it's a matter of you're not dealing with it yourself or you're not skilled in dealing with it with other people. Years ago, I was taught this brilliant model that I call the tough conversation model. It is a wonderful way to approach the most challenging situations that you have. It will shock you in terms of how effective it is. Here's the four steps. Number one, ask permission. Number two, state the indisputable facts in about 20 seconds. There are very, very few facts in any situation. Usually we end up sharing opinions, judgments, things like that. We don't want to touch those. We're only sharing the facts. Number three, state your feelings about the situation. These are non-judgmental feelings that are about you, not about the other person. And then number four, suggest a resolution or make a request. The key with this model and why it's so powerful is, in step one, you ask permission to make sure the person is ready to have a conversation. And that would sound something like, hey, I've got a bit of a sensitive discussion we need to have. Are, are you available for us to chat about this? So you're just making sure that they're in the state of mind where they can actually have this conversation. Don't just barge in and do it. Number two, state the indisputable facts. Number three, state your feelings. These would be your own personal feelings, your frustration, your anxiety, your concern, your worry, your excitement, your disappointment. But ideally stay away from judgmental phrases. This is only about your reaction. In both the facts and the feelings, it should be things that people can't argue with. Finally, step four, the resolution. Suggest a couple outcomes that might work. The reason why this model works so well is you get away from throwing opinions or creating arguments because you're just laying out facts and feelings and then talking about solutions. So the challenge for you, the challenge is to go and have one of the tough conversations that you need to have and do it in the next week. Take and fill out your thoughts on each of those four steps so you're well prepared and then go have a chat with the person about the situation. Getting back to the tools and the main tools in this book are all available inside the book and the master tools like the master plan and the quarterly plans are available for download at lawrenceandco.com. Just go into the book section. In this case, for this particular habit, it might be some of the toads that you lick or it could be a habit that you master. Maybe you've got a whole bunch of these lingering conversations you have to clean up and that might be two or three of the items on your list for the quarter or, or maybe you're just going to work and practice the habit generally throughout the quarter. 
Either way, my challenge to you is to always remember that these conversations usually help clear the air with both sides. When there's tension between you and I, you can feel it. I know it, you know it, but it takes one of us to step up and be the adult and put the conversation on the table in a respectful way so we can talk about it and ideally clear it up and move on.